This episode is sponsored by Genshin Impact. I'm Kerry Stagmer, and we are the blacksmiths of Baltimore Knife and Sword. We're going to be building some of your favorite things and fantastic objects you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. We're very excited today to be working with Genshin Impact. We're going to be building the weapon Freedom Sworn. We've looked at the channel and seen just really a huge number of requests for all different weapons from the game. It's a complicated forging and a fairly large blade. We're just gonna get the metal hot, get in the forge, and get going. Rather than going to the power hammer directly, we're going to start by taking this material and what we call breaking it down. We're going to be using the hydraulic press. It's 88 tons of pressure and it's going to come down in a smaller area, drive the material down and get us down into bar form. We've got a nice die that sits on the bottom that actually has a stop on it and that's going to allow us to make a fairly even bar before we go over to the hammer and begin to free form. You'll notice that there's something flaking off the outside of the billet. We, we call that scale, that's basically an oxidized material that cools slightly on the surface and then when the hammer hits it, it breaks free. Uh, we, we actually try and brush that off and use that to uh, keep the piece fairly clean while we're working. You'll see that the blade kind of catches on fire as we're working on the hydraulic press. Uh, that's residual oil. It's no different than when we first start running the power hammers, there'll be some oil on the dies. Uh, it's a little different with the hydraulic press because we have high pressure oil that's, that's actually actuating that cylinder. So we keep two people on that. You've got one holding the billet and one working the press. There's a couple reasons for that. We want to make sure that if there's any oil spraying out or anything comes loose, that we're not catching stuff on fire. Now that we've finished up breaking this down with a hydraulic press, Derek's going to get an assist from Decker. They're going to use a big hammer and flatten this bar out just to get it even and to be able to get a good idea where they are. Take another heat and it's time for power hammers.
as you know, we've, we've got a CNC plasma table. So when we're trying to figure out the sizing on weapons like this, even if we're going to forge them, which, you know, is nice to do because we have a big power hammer and it's nice to forge that blade out, we tend to cut a pattern. You could cut it out in paper if you were set up that way, but since we're already set up in the uh, CNC setup, we're going to go ahead and cut out a template. Derek will use that to check against the shape as he's doing the forging. We don't always show that, but we do typically make it, uh, even going all the way back to Scissor Blade, where we kind of made a joke about cutting that out with the plasma, but that was really just so we had a template. often see the smith, usually with a piece of soapstone or some other way to mark on an anvil or mark on the floor, he'll, he'll draw out some either some specific points that he's trying to reach when he's forming or a set of measurements so that he can lay out the material as he's forging without worrying about burning up a ruler or anything like that. Uh, it's pretty traditional to use the soapstone and it'll continue to be something you can see even when it's hot. Now that Derek and I have the preform for Freedom Sworn forged, I've got to clean up and get to the final profile. So I'm going to start grinding that with an 8 inch wheel to get some of the larger lines straight and I'll switch to the 4 inch wheel to get the smaller details that we need to fit in. There are about a dozen big belt sanders here at Baltimore Knife. You're going to notice that we have all different size wheels, different belts, they're different grits and colors, and they are all different materials, so they grind different ways. Uh, but in the sizing, typically you want to use the largest wheel that you can because it'll make the smoothest grind and give you the least number of transitions that we have to polish out later. Decker now does some layout and checks measurements to make sure that all the different sections of this blade are going to be where we need them to be and make sure there's enough meat that's forged into you know, a particular form to make sure that when we try and create this blade the rest of the way, we've, we've got a good eye on where we're starting.
So they've gotten done cleaning up the edges for Genshin Sword. So now I'm gonna go in, start edge grinding it, and see where we get with it. We're getting ready to heat treat the Genshin Impact Sword, but before that we want to normalize it. What that does is give the carbon an opportunity to come into solution and even out through the piece, gives us some stress relief that helps avoid warping, and also reduces the grain size to reduce brittleness in the steel. After the normalizing, then we'll go ahead, reheat it, and go to the quench. That'll harden the steel, which is exactly what we need for this. Following the hardening, we'll temper to reduce some of the stress, reduce the hardness a little bit, and make sure it's nice and tough. When we're grinding after heat treating, uh, typically it's something where we will already have gone through a temper stage. We uh, have a very large kiln in one of the other shops that we work with. And um, so we took it over to that other kiln and cycled it at 400 degrees for two hours. But anyway, Bill's, Bill's gonna go to the grinding now. He's gotta watch his heat and make sure that we, we don't exceed those temperatures. We won't, don't wanna get over four or 500 degrees. Uh, or we risk softening the blade. So we'll be careful, we'll go through the polishing phases and we'll get this blade done. Actually taking us a really long time to get this basic form down and figure out how we want to fold these sections. So Derek is going to go through and, and kind of make these wing sections on this guard. We'll be making templates and he'll cut them out in steel and then be coming with the forge.
saw Freedom Sworn, Bill was polishing the blade. I've laid out the tape, got the paint on, the design's in. Now that the paint is dry, I can go ahead and clean up all the Sharpie marks from my design with alcohol. It won't affect the paint, but it'll get the, every, all the shiny parts nice and clean again. Once I have the guard back over here from the guys, I can slip that on, match up where my patterns go, and do some of the glowing designs that go down the blade. This is another one of those creations that pretty much takes everybody in the shop to have hands on it. Even Ferent spent a huge amount of time getting the paintwork just right on the blade. Now we'll fully assemble the sword, get it out to the anvil, and then let's get outside and start some chopping. Me good. <laughs> click here to subscribe or click here to see more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want the team to build. Tell us in the comments below what you would like to see. We'd like to thank Genshin Impact for sponsoring this episode.